Attaching your rails onto your surfboard can be a little bit of a daunting task if you haven't done it before, but the good news is, is it's actually a lot simpler than you may think. Now, all of the DIY surfboard kits boards are using a bent laminated rail, which is to say it's a solid rail which is bent to shape. Now, the reason we've chosen this method rather than a hollow rail is that it gives the user a little bit more options when it comes to shaping. It's also stronger when it comes to things like impact resistance, and it doesn't require too many tools to get the rail applied. Now, in the lead up to attaching our rails, we just have to do a little bit of prep to out blank, so to speak. So you'll remember that we've got the decks attached and we've flush trimmed it with the router. However, that doesn't necessarily mean the edges are nice and square. So we've got the board laid down on a flat surface and with a square we're just coming along making sure that everything is nice and square and we can see on this board right here we're touching at the top but not on the bottom so here if I run my finger over it I can actually feel that this top deck isn't flush with this rail so we'll come in and we'll just rectify that by taking a few passes with our block plan. With all of that squared up and our outline looking really good, now we can get on to the lamination process. So the first thing we have to do is rip our excess polonia, so the spare skins that we have, into the correct width that we require for our board. So uh, for this board here, 100 millimeters is all that is required. Some boards will need 150. Now the way that we determine that is we measure the highest point on each end. So we've got 70 down that end and we got 90 on this end. So 100 mil gives us 10 mil of uh, safety at the highest point. And we can go one further by actually propping up the narrower side of the board or the, the shorter side of the board to split the difference. So now we're at 80 on this end. We're at 80 on this end. So now if we rip it into 100 millimeter wide strips, we're gonna have 20 millimeters of safety at either end. And that is with the board already propped up 10 millimeters off of the surface. So if I lift this up, you can see Underneath the board, we have 10 millimeter thick plywood strips, and that's just there to keep this off the surface. So when we glue the rails on, we get a good overhang on both the top and the bottom. Now, all of our boards need a 24 to 25 millimeter thick rail. So if you're working with our Polonia, which is six millimeters thick, you'll need four or five strips glued onto the edges. Now to rip the boards, I'm going to use my bandsaw, but of course a table saw would do just as well. Or if you don't have big machinery like this, a jigsaw is just fine as well. You just need to rip it to be relatively straight. It doesn't need to be perfect, it just has to be close. Okay, so with those strips cut, now we can look at our rails. So here we've left them at the full six millimeter thickness. So we just need four, and that brings us up to the required 24 millimeter thick rail. Now, if you have a look at this bench, you'll also notice where all of these holes come into play. Not only do they act as stops to keep our board in one place. So you can see we've got one here at the tail and one up at the nose. Now we're working on a fish, so we're using the inside uh, rail as our stop, but ordinarily you would have it on the other side. But it also gives us a spot to kind of modify our clamping techniques a bit. So we can use our posts to push our bars in and have them close to where they need to be. But we can also use wedges like so to get them tight to the rail. Now, when you combine that with the ratchet strap, you can see that this gets for a really easy rail lamination without the need for any real special jigs. I mean, the bench itself is a special jig, but you know, this is very versatile and easy to kind of replicate on any bench with a bit of thickness to it. Now, like any glue up, it's a very good idea to do a dry run just to test everything works out, not only in theory, but also in practice. So what I'm going to do so I'm just going to reset this so that the strap 
that we have can run all the way along. And then start testing our clamping strategy. So up here you can see where we've got this big gap. I'm gonna use two wedges and drive them together. Now, having all of these holes also gives us more options for our ratchet strap. So you can see that we've got this big opening here. So I'm going to kind of think about a car's serpentine belt and route our strap in such a way that it starts to pull our rails in. So you can see here it's going through this post into the clamp, but the hook is way down here, so we've got an interesting path. Now down this end, you can see we're doing the similar thing with the route of the strap, bringing it nice and close to the nose. And then anywhere else which has a gap between the post, we can just drive wedges in by just kind of hooking a clamp into it and uh, pushing them in nice and deep. So with our test clamp done, we are fairly confident that this will go together tightly we will undo everything we've just done, apply glue to each layer, and then redo this exact procedure. The glue I'm using here is Tight Bond 2. Uh, the reason why I'm using it here instead of the polyurethane is it's just a cheaper glue. And because we're making so many boards in-house here, it makes sense for us to have different glues, but you really don't need to change glues for this. If you've bought polyurethane for doing the skeleton, use polyurethane for doing the rails as well. It's not a big issue at all. Okay, and that is the first rail on. So we'll let this dry for three to five hours and uh, we'll get on with the next side. Okay, so we've jumped ahead in time a little bit here, but that was method one. So I took it out of the clamps and I trimmed off the excess material so I can show you the alternative method using the same table, but with an additional jig. Now, what you can see here is the same posts that we drove the wedges in, but this time I've added these things, and these are called cams. So it's an off-center hole to a, basically a circle. So as you rotate, it pushes the workpiece further away. Now, you can see here that I have two cams per post, and that is so I can align these up and down so that the top is in line with the top of the deck and the bottom one is in line with the bottom of the deck. And that will ensure that we get a really good contact on the top and the bottom, no matter what. So with the wedges, you have to be a little bit more careful because if you have pressure at the top and not the bottom, you could end up with a gap. But with this, it's a little bit more fail safe. So the idea with these is that you put a bit of wood between them just to protect from denting. And then you twist them away from each other until they're nice and tight. Now that there is a really positive lock. Now you will still need a few additional clamps if there's any gaps, but this method, it just reduces the amount of clamps that are needed and also makes for a much easier clamping process. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna apply glue to this, rig it up just like we would before and demonstrate how this system can work. Now, instead of adding additional clamps, I'm just gonna add additional ratchet straps because that's a much cheaper option than clamps and basically everyone's guaranteed to have at least a couple laying around. <laughs> With our cans, we open it up, chuck in our spaces. Probably only need one on this one. Have it aligned so that the bottom is about where the bottom is and the top's about where the top deck is. And we squeeze them together.
So the idea with these ratchet straps uh, is instead of having to have a lot of clamps, you can get away with this solution which is essentially clamp free. Okay. This is the last spot, we've just got a slight gap there. So what we're going to do is apply a strap and this is it. That's our entire rail done. All right, so that is it. So we've used the cams to bring the pressure in, add the straps where it needs a little bit more pressure. That, so that's just between the cams essentially. So if you wanted to, you could make your bench have spacing at every 150 mil instead of every 300 mil and not have this problem. Uh, but really it's only an issue for the shorter boards. So for us, this works nicely. I did still have to use the one clamp here just because I have a tray built into this section to hold our uh, clamps but other than that it's all just cams and our ratchet straps. Up at the nose I just use this small clamp which everyone is likely to have to help draw it in even further and that seems to have done a really good job. All right, so there it is one attached rail. In the next video we will be looking at different methods for trimming the rail off before we start shaping. We've got a nice tight seam on the underside, we've got a nice tight seam on the top side so those two things indicate that we should have a nice and tight rail lamination. So if you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also head over to diysurfboardkits.com.au to check out our complete range of DIY surfboard kits. Thanks for watching.